Hello again. We're back with uh, Dr. Ian Campbell and his wife, uh, Allison. And uh, this time I, I want to tell you that uh, in 1986, uh, Elizabeth and I were appointed to Pakistan. We were there five years. And then in 1991, we too were appointed to uh, international headquarters. And one mm. of the first people I met was Dr. Ian Campbell. And uh, he very quickly filled me in on some of the hopes that he had. And one of those was to get out to South Asia, which was my responsibility at that time, mm -hmm. and to uh, begin very, very important work to try and implement some of these uh, basic principles that he was telling you in the first part. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm going to ask Allison again to uh, add a few words or no I think Ian you're no, going to no. speak are you anyway I I'll leave it up to you you're uh, yeah. well what did you do when you first got to IHQ because well, then I'll add in what yeah my what first part day there that? was um and literally the first day I, I I I internally felt I was internally convicted that that we had to facilitate response mm -hmm. as support authentic support a learning based support to these different countries where mm -hmm the army was called territories I mean and we needed to I just did it intuitively I think based on what I'd learned through the sub-saharan African experience but but I just felt that we would never make any progress by trying to do fix-ups we mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. we needed to not so much rely on technical interventions but on stimulating ownership in country locally mm -hmm. yes um, mm -hmm. so that the uptake would be theirs culturally contexted and yet within a framework of the vision that on the one hand, people can respond in their local settings, home and neighborhood, and in their local organizational settings. But that response is hugely enhanced if we can um, take a, a story sharing mode, we, we can take a relational way, we can actually learn how to participate better. Mm -hmm. That of course takes certain skills and attributes in the health workers and whatever. You know, it doesn't, didn't mean for a second that we were to sell all our hospitals and stop doing things in laboratories. We, we just needed to do that in a more tuned up way. So mm -hmm. what did you do? So we developed a team approach, uh -huh. yeah. number one. And here I enter the story. Enter. <laughs> okay, so I was I, I became a team with two other women. Uh, we were um, interdisciplinary team, a, a social worker, a teacher, and my background, as I told you before, is community development, as well as um, development studies. Um, we were a multicultural team as well, and um, we came out of that. Zambian experience we had experienced what community could do in that setting and one of the teammates was in fact Zambian so we um, started we were sent by Ian to Brazil two of us and we understood from the beginning that we couldn't really explain or tell this story from a Zambian experience into Brazil and expect people to immediately say aha and go ahead. We had to kind of walk together into that community and look and see what we could see. We had to learn and we had to learn together and we had to learn by doing. And so that's what we actually did. Um, and we saw some work that was in favelas that had been a kind of a handout work turn into a community engaged mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. that where worship started to come up in homes. Uh, in a favela, which was a very violent neighborhood. So we began to learn about a community that looks very dysfunctional. What kind of pulling together can happen there around a health issue? It was an amazing experience. And um, uh, I think we understood that what we were, were, were not, we were not teachers, we were facilitators and we were learners together with people who were trying to work out what to do in their own setting. That was the beginning of a facilitation team approach. So when John, when you entered mm. IHQ and you were looking to, toward um, South Asia, mm -hmm. uh, the next place we went was to Mizoram, Northeast India, by way of Bombay. In both places, people connected to what we were trying to do. We, we made friends that we have to this day. When they started to do some community work from which we continue to learn. Uh, and we also saw application of principles into extremely different cultural settings with very different issues going on. Sometimes HIV, sometimes other problems as well, uh, drugs and violence. Mm. Um, sometimes from a, a health base, sometimes from a core base, mm. sometimes from a um, 
social program based from any sort of setting, we start to learn what those adaptations uh, or those applications could look like. But you see, the thing that was interesting for me, what I learned during this whole experience, and we were worked mm. together for six years or more, uh, my, my training as a Salvation Army officer was mm. to work to, do, to a decision, whether it was mm. a spiritual decision or a behavioral decision, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the whole approach that I heard in that first part, and, and I learned during the time you were in South Asia, that it wasn't so much of coming with the knowledge that they needed to learn and then make a decision, but it was to come alongside, to walk with them, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to learn from them mm -hmm. the situation, and the whole team ministry, the whole community ministry, which was quite new to me, yes. but I see that now as a fundamental principle of how we address the issues mm. of the world today. Yeah. Can I add in a couple of other dimensions that we didn't actually articulate in the first bit on the history immersion, mm. but just some meanings. Yeah. Deep suffering of a huge yes. kind, yes. indescribable, mm. grief-stricken families, mm. feeling loss of the past and loss of the future, leading to paralysis in the present. Yes. This is where hope dissipates. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can only know that if you've been in the middle of it. Right. Yes, that's true. People in the audience here will know that. Mm -hmm family members may know that. The yeah. point is, when it's population-wide, there's mm -hmm. something unique, there's something special going on. You right. feel as though the, the yeah. country's soul is evaporating. Right. Right. And even today in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the high prevalence parts of India and China, the country's soul, the, the, yes. the local soul can feel itself to be evaporating and we don't yeah. even know that. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that with deep suffering can come deep healing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If we're there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. at the same time, within the experience of deep healing of relationships, of reconciliation, mm -hmm. of people taking courage and taking charge mm -hmm. of their lives mm -hmm. to forge a future with hope, mm -hmm. there is the emergence in a fresh way, mm -hmm. an invigorated way of deep faith for mm -hmm. all of us. That's yes. true. Where yes. we know without a shadow of a doubt that God is love mm -hmm. and that yeah. we can have a personal conversation mm -hmm. with God in the middle of that suffering. Right that yeah. is all about Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's all about what God has done in Jesus. Right. Yes. The personal touch with humanity, right. Right. the revelation of himself, the revelation of this of this family, this, this kingdom possibility. And the, the sharp edges of that happen through encounter with deep suffering that yes. is longitudinal, that will not go away within our generation or the next or the next, yes. but which engages us non-negotiably in the, in the, in the in the deep experience of participation with people because we know that in our own strength, in our own systems, in our own organization, we are not enough. Mm. So what you're mm. saying then, the goal really is still the same. The result is still the same. It's just a whole different yes. approach. The yes. result is yes. the same and more. Yes. Yes. What you see is, yes. is a different quality of faith realization right. in yeah. so yeah. far as yeah. we, we understand the healing grace of God in Christ more vigorously, more fully, more deeply than I think we've ever had a chance to examine before um, in the world of health and healing, uh, than perhaps through its predecessor, which was the world of leprosy engagement by yeah. those few who were involved. Yeah. There, were other, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there are other experiences of incredible loss and suffering where we are propelled in that direction. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, uh, the epidemic of drugs and, 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 yes. and addictions yes. Yes. is yes. one and affecting communities violence. such in yeah. Rio yes. or yeah. in Toronto yeah. or in Melbourne or yeah. in London. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the different quality, or, or not the different quality, the different um, cause of loss in the tsunami of 2004, 24th of yes. December. Yes. Yes. We'll go there in a minute. But that that's massive loss on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How else can we engage? Yeah. We cannot engage simply through interventions. What we did as a as a as a as a, as a response to the learning through going global with mm. a community development, a community conversational mm. and organizational adaptational approach to HIV and mm. other health issues, was to stimulate a community conversational or relationship building mm -hmm. approach to the three countries that were most affected by the right, tsunami. Right. Mm -hmm. And in 181 communities around the world, over two years, those conversations were recorded. And the degree of adaptation by the interventions was also recorded. Yeah. And where that happened in sync, there was no jealousy, there was no competition. No. No. There was a welcome to the army, whereas otherwise right. there would have been a dismissal. And so so in short, politics, yeah. what we're tracing here is that from 1990, 
onwards. There was an evolving sense of connectivity, um, not through interventions that were looking the same, but in fact culturally, you know, foreign, but okay. rather an embedding in the strengths for response that was possible. Mm-hmm. That played out over a long period, the 17, 18 years that we were there. And certainly it took a big leap forward in our teaming up with you and mm-hmm. some of the IASs in areas like South Asia, mm-hmm. South Pacific East mm-hmm. Asia, and, and Africa mm-hmm. in particular. Yeah. The team of two and three became a team of many, many teammates mm. from all parts of the world yeah. who were doing something exciting in their own community and having a deep spiritual engagement, no longer satisfied with just a program, wanting to go further. Yeah, it was really inspirational for me to, to see how people in a village could become part of the team, which yeah. was an experience that was yeah. really very special. Yeah.